Bob the Avenue, your host. Uh, if somebody could come move the camera so we can see the monitor, that would be cool. Uh, and, 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 and of course I have my crew up here with me. To my right is the beautiful uh, inside and out Nellie Harrington. Hello everyone. And right next to her Welcome. is our guest uh, and musician Mike Wetzel. Glad to have you Mike. Thank you. And, and right next to Mike is the uh, the Revenator. Uh, the Revenator. <laughs> the uh, computer whiz, the best I've seen, Richard Phelps. Thank you. And and the, and the philanthropist and, and 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 all that. Anyway, we're coming to your your uh, your homes to talk about the human condition, and of course, uh, most of us have a mental condition, and we talk about that. Uh, uh, and try to reach everybody so people can we try to be uh, transparent with our diagnoses so that people can identify with us you know and and if you're out there and you've been down and out and you are down and out we've been there you know so we, we if you want to call you know, well anyone is welcome to call us uh, they'll be putting up the phone number soon uh, and, and, and um, before we start the show, we always go for prayer. I would like to pray for uh, Craig A. Bear, uh, who is my brother-in-law who lost his mom. For, for Craig and, and his sister, Danette, and brother Wendell, they lost their mom, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before. And, uh, and Craig, you know, like, like, like this, like, 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 like men and women say, the women say there's no good men, the men say there's no good women, but Craig, you know, and I agree, there's no good men, there's not many good men, and Craig was a really good guy. I know? never say that. Huh? I always say everybody's good. Okay, well, okay. Speak for uh, yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we all have issues. I'm in the frame. But anyway, uh, I ask for prayers for, for Craig and his family and my sister. And I ask for prayers for Patsy Bertrand. Patsy is, of course, beautiful inside and outside, always put up with me. I adore Patsy, I'll be admitted. You know, she's one of my favorite persons. Like, uh, you know, as much as I bothered her, she's never been, can you imagine knowing somebody for 40, 50 years that have never been ugly to you? Wow. That's Patsy, class act. Hi, Patsy. And Miss Jackie Ballou, Hi, Miss Jackie. Uh, what can I say? Miss Jackie is uh, another classy lady. Man, I'm full, I'm surrounded by class. I know a lot of the classy ladies. That's great. <laughs> Uh, and we would also like to pray for Joe Stanbridge, who is in the, in the nursing home. Uh, uh, we would also like to pray for the Blanc-Bellaire's family. Uh, uh, can y'all thank Richard's mom's family, Richard's uh, relatives, so Richard? I'm heading to Seattle April the 28th <laughs> to May the 12th. I'm going to my mother's memorial on April the 30th, my birthday. I'm going to be reuniting with some childhood friends that knew my mother, and we're going to uh, honor her at the graveside. She taught piano for 35 years to hundreds and hundreds of students. And I'm honored to say that I attended a piano concert along with the choir and the UL Orchestra through Esther Terrell's invitation. She will be coming on with Paul She'll be coming on weeks. the show soon. And Thank you, that, I just knew that my mother was there watching over me. Thank you. I have an emergency announcement. Uh, if I can say this yeah. very quick, Vocational Rehab Services, otherwise known as Louisiana Rehab Services, which serves those job seekers who are veterans and disabled, is facing a six million to eight million dollar cut. People are asked to come testify next Monday and Tuesday at Room 5 in the state legislature in Baton Rouge. If you can't make it, please call your senator and representative to Baton Rouge ASAP. They've already been cut all the way down to tier level 
five, which means there's no services. I was served by LRS, was employed for two and a half years. We don't need to have this cut off. No. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. And then also we'd like to ask for prayers for the uh, Noble, Denver Noble and Roseland Noble. Uh, Denver lost his, uh, fall, his father recently and and we and, and they're the heads of the NAMI, some of the heads of the NAMI group where me and Richard meet and, and, and we ask for prayers for them. And, and also people, anyone, if you're out there and you have a mental diagnosis and you would like to, for prayers, anyone that wants to have prayers for us, you can call us on our number. Uh, it's up there, uh, 366-8951. And also, if anyone would like to come on the show to read poetry or, or read what you wrote, or, or sing or whatever, y'all can call us up. Call me up at 781-4255 and we will be glad to schedule y'all for that. Okay, now we got that done. High five. Good. Okay, let me read Nellie's story. Nellie is a writer like me and we're working on her book. Uh, laying, the top, laying the top the whitish pink quartz saying, Angelo gently rolled Shanty off his back to lie on her side. And Angelo is a unicorn. <sighs> Sir, she looked at him through two huge and strangely alert emerald eyes. For she had just come up out of two hours of cocooning and visions, sitting upright gingerly, stretching arms high to the sun. She smiled a special smile the one she always saved for Andalou. She put a hand upon her, his rib and reveled in the silk, silk, silken softness of his coat and she took in the contrast between his coat and his superior steel strap and perfection of muscles that ripple with the slightest breath he took. How, come, how can someone so strong be so amazingly kind and gentle? She waved her hand before Angelou's eyes, and he laid his head in her lap and was fast asleep. Reaching across her left shoulder, Shanty unclipped a thin whitish blue shawl that bore resemblance to the same color markings as and Andalou's left arch on his coat. She lifted it to the sea breeze and the shawl crackled like cellophane paper. Shanty let go of the shawl and it took a life of its own, opening to half its side. The shawl folded, then floated to rest upon the sand, eager to serve the stallion. She tenderly lifted Angelou's sleeping head and placed it to rest on the awaiting shawl, sitting on the, song, on the sand. That's, that's a pretty awesome description, girl. That's thanks, really, thanks. Really, buddy. really brilliant. Thanks. Yeah, we kind of like poor our trauma, you know, we deal with brain injury trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder and different things. And so we kind of pour our trauma into the writing and it starts taking a life of its own. And mm -hmm. it's been amazing mm -hmm. what it can turn itself into when you just, you know, allow yourself to let go of it and this trust is. what comes through your hands your mind down onto the paper. It's sort of like defragging. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you don't write a book, just, you know, doodling, even they've shown that doodlers, you know, when you're doing it and you're letting go of the French and the stress is pouring out of you and going onto that paper. And it's really been shown that people who do the writing, I do it every day because, you know, and I feel myself starting getting really wound up. Now I know that it's going to make me feel better, so I grab. Of course, I grab. of course. And this is, uh, this is Bob's first book. This is The Time Traveler with Jared. And Jared is uh, going into Paris. Okay. Which is so interesting, but he's in the time machine, and this is uh, where it starts. Wait, wait, it, it, that's in... Uh Am I wrong? No, the 13th century, oh, okay. 1300s. Okay. Oh, okay. okay, awesome. Okay. No, no, that yeah, the 1300s. 1300s. Okay. Yeah. Bob's been doing some amazing writing. It's pretty amazing because you know he writes sometimes 60 pages a night. He is just a writing machine now. As the machine spins around, Jared notices he feels no ill, ill, sorry, ill effects from the spinning. 
Again, like deja vu, he notices the familiar colors of reds, greens, blues, and luminescence yellows and purples, all spinning around the machine and traveling in and out of his body with a familiar tingling and pleasurable feelings like those other trips had given him. Then again, there is a lightning clap, and again, Jared is no longer spinning, and he is in a luminescent tunnel of black and gray with the sky hovering overhead like God's haven, watching and directing his odyssey. That's nice. That is awesome. Thank you. It's beautiful. Let me read. It is. He writes so well. The imagery well. is. Really. I mean, I've read science fiction since I was a kid. It's very unique. And yeah. the whole idea of wormholes is kind of new, and yeah. he's described it beyond yeah, anything I've yeah. read. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. That's automatic writing now. You know, you don't look it up. You don't think about it. It's just flowing. And yeah. that Stream cleans our heart. And, right. Uh, so. let, okay, go ahead. Let me read. This is my, my, my first book, From Light to Darkness to Glory. And Patsy, if you're reading, if you're listening, listen to this. I continued going over to Patsy's house. She had one of those old style antebellum and houses with a porch that went around the front and mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. Patsy was born there. Her father, George, was a well-respected man in St. Martinville and was once a merchant there. He was in his 80s in those days and would always send me to Robert's to buy some beer for him. <laughs> and because of that, he called me his beer man. <laughs> I got a kick out of that and so did Patsy. When I went to Patsy's place, sometimes I would just sit at the bar and not talk to anyone but Patsy. I was very depressed in those days, not accomplishing anything and having no success to talk about. I would just sit and sulk at Patsy's bar, and I'm sure her kids weren't too happy that I was always hanging around. And when Liz was around, I would just stare at her. If I had done that to anyone else, I think it would have bothered her. But anyway, okay, okay. So you have uh, some, let's see, we're talking about uh, brain trauma, injury, and post-traumatic stress disorder tonight and sharing some things that we've learned about that and some techniques that we use that have helped us tremendously. Bob, you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. I'll start off. Uh, okay. This is, we research uh, everything we talk about. Yeah, I'm a big researcher. It's so much fun. Blood head trauma can happen from a blow to the head and result in serious damage to the brain. According to the National Institutes of Health, the impact can range, range from a minor bump to severe brain injury. According to braininjury.com, the majority of traumatic brain injuries 61% occurs due to traffic accidents. Even if the head trauma does not result in an open wound, wound injury can occur to the brain, like our pro football people. The effects of blood, blood head trauma are irreversible and severe and can interfere with normal brain function. There are two types of head traumas can occur, concussion and contusion. With a concussion, the brain is shaken, while a contusion causes direct injury to the, gate, to the brain. Uh, uh, the loss of consciousness from a blunt head trauma leads to even more damage to the brain. In addition, injury can occur to the opposite side of the brain, called countercoup, when the head is moving and hits a stationary object. This blunt, blunt force results in the opposite side of the brain pulling away from the scale and, and, and becoming injured. The most common causes of head injury are traffic, accidents, sport injuries, physical assaults, and falls. In, in sports, wearing a helmet can re reduce the risk of head, of head injury and using proper Restraining devices in the in the car can prevent help prevent head injury. You want to take it from there now? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, each week uh, we've been doing our journaling and um, how important it is to keep up with our journaling so that we can look back once we learn our tools and have that handy to grab. 
you know, whenever um, these, um, I, I call them spells, they come on you, they can be pretty severe, right? And so before I had all these tools, it wasn't quite as good as it is now, and I'm getting a handle on it thanks to these things. I've practiced them a long time. And I talk each week about the Heart Math Institute because I'm so impressed with their work. And as we share it, more and more people are doing well and saying that it has helped them more than anything that they found. And uh, if you want to learn more, go to heartmath.org. And HeartMath Institute is an innovative nonprofit research and education organization that provides simple, user-friendly, mental, emotional self-regulation tools. And I want to stop here just for a second. We always say each week that what we share is for self-care, to help add to the care that you get from your physician from your psychiatrist, your psychologist, your therapist, your medicine. This is never meant to replace what you do with them. And these are only things that we have tried and that use, uh, it has, has helped us. Um, it says here, uh, techniques that people of all ages, even children, can use in the moment to relieve stress and break through to greater levels of personal balance, stability, creativity, intuitive insight and fulfillment. So what they done, have done is it, it intense study on the heart to brain connection. And when the heart uh, makes the connection with the brain, it's been shown that everything calms down, your stress levels, your cortisol, you know, you wanna keep those down uh, as much as possible. So before we get started with our journaling, if you wanna break out your journal, those who have been doing that, um, I'm just gonna read a few uh, statistics here and facts that we found through the heartmath.org. A growing body of compelling scientific evidence is demonstrating a link between mental and emotional attitudes, psychological health, and long-term well-being. 60 to 80% of primary care doctor visits are related to stress, mm -hmm. yet only 3% of patients receive stress management help. In a study of 5,716 middle-aged people, those with the highest self-regulation abilities were 50 times likely to be more alive without chronic disease 15 years later wow. than those with mm. the lowest self-regulation scores. Positive emotions are a reliable predictor of better health. Even for those without food or shelter, while negative emotions are a reliable predictor uh, when you need them to seek out things, a Harvard medical study of 16,023 heart attack survivors found when the subjects became angry during emotional conflicts, their risk of a, a did, added heart attacks was more than double that of those who learned to remain calm. Wow. With, with the the tools. With the heart math. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's pretty incredible. Uh, what we do is we start with the breath. The breath is so important. Uh, you just allow the breath to come in, and you imagine it's coming in through the heart wall, and you let it out through the heart wall, and that automatically connects your heart with your brain. And while we're uh, doing that and letting the breath do what it does, it has an innate wisdom, uh, we have uh, been looking into something, it's called uh, EMDR therapy. And uh, this is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. And that's a trauma therapy developed by psychologist Dr. Francine Shapiro. She made the chance observation that eye movements can reduce the intensity of the disturbing thoughts when she noticed her own stress reactions diminished when her eyes swept back and forth as she walked through a park one day. Now I've actually done this um, with someone and it has helped me incredibly to learn this technique whenever you have a flashback uh, coming uh, at you to start this. Um, you know, we've watched the, some specials and it's pretty interesting to, to understand why this happens. And when we understand why, we get a power. 
Uh, part of it is it seems that the neurotransmitters are chemicals that run through your body and they have to connect with the synapses and they have to be thrown up between this hollow of the synapses. Uh, uh, oh, somebody call. called him. Let's see what this is. Okay. Yes, Carla. Hello? Hey, this is Paul Bosworth. I love your show. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for calling. My pleasure. It's, it's wonderful that you're discussing different tools for brain injury survivors as most of us want to just go ahead and, and take a pill and get better, but we don't. Right. So it's, it's tremendously helpful to learn about heart math and learn about uh, meditating and, and working through some of our challenges. And yeah, definitely know that's helped all of us and that is so true because before we all began doing the tools, it was a lot, lot harder. And as we do them more, they just automatically kick in, it's sort of like getting back on a bicycle or skating, you know, you get better at it. You, and, you do, you do. And um, the statistics are, are growing. I, I just came back from uh, the brain injury conference in Washington, D.C. and learned that uh, the number per year is up to 2.5 million per year. Of course, the number one is uh, car crashes and falls. But there's also this thing called the NFL that's generating a lot of, of interest in concussion because those players conk their head on average about a thousand times a year. Wow. Yeah. And that's creating a, a protein that's uh, popping in their brains called CTE. Wow, yes. It's, it's wow. unbelievable. You know, we watched on, on in fact, on your site, uh, Paula watched it, and it created a brand new awareness for me as well that it, they had a picture of how the brain gets, you know, shooken inside the, the cavity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you know that the inside of your head is sharp? Yes. yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. And here I am having a contra coup injury myself, September yeah. 11, 2007. Right. Um, didn't take the day, but I thought, wow, I think I damaged my brain. Oh, yes. no, isn't that the moment of truth? Uh -huh. when, you, when you go, oh my God, this is really happening. And so when you. But it's, but it's okay. It is we okay. Can, we can learn from each other and teach each other what, we, what, we, what we're learning on the fly. It is, exactly, and now there's so much more. That's why I say your miracle's waiting out there. There's so much, you know, incredible resources, support, like with what Paul does. You know, I'll go to his site every day for comfort and to find some new information. You want to tell them more about how they can come to your group? Absolutely. Uh I moved here. I'm originally from New Orleans. I moved to Lafayette because it's not New Orleans. It's a lot safer and happier place to live. And come to find out, we didn't have a brain injury support group. And so wow. today, uh, six years later, we do. And it's called a maze, a mental awareness zone for everyone. That's a great And we meet name. the first Monday of the month. And we meet at Victory Recovery and Addiction Center. It's on 111 Liberty Drive. It's just off Collie Saloon. It's a it's an addiction and recovery center for alcohol, and it's 100 yards uh, behind Dick's uh, Daiquiris on Collie Saloon. I'm sure that was an error in judgment. I'm sure, but it works. It just works in <laughs> South Louisiana. Well, um, I think you did. We it, I think you did at, a good thing. Uh, Six o'clock. We open our doors at 5:30. You're more than welcome to come concussion, uh, acquired brain injury, I've fallen, and I'm, I'm just not, I'm not right from it. Uh, you're all welcome. That's awesome, and we appreciate you so much for your, your work. And this week, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about, don't, aren't you having uh, some uh, aromatherapy or something this week? We're, we're, th for May 2nd, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, yes. um, the first weekend, the first week in May, I believe it's the second. Yes. We have uh, aromatic infusions. Uh, Charles over there is going to come meet with us and share what he does and, and how aromatherapy actually calms the brain down. Yes, yeah, so yes. It can incredible. excite it as well, and it could help it to sleep, so we can get those sleep 
awake cycles balanced out. It, yeah, the oils, you know, I've studied them extensively and I have used them. Uh, and uh, it's shown that that crosses over the brain blood barrier. And Which out is the key yeah. to the kingdom. Right, right. We and can it's, get past that brain blood barrier. If we, my, once I conked my head, my MRI was good, my CT was good. They were about to send me back to work, but I was a mess. Yeah, right. right. Paul, I went through the same thing twice, at least once in 78 down a water slide, then yeah. last July, and then my birth trauma, I found out from a t particular physician also was considered in that, and they didn't even know about this in 1953. Wow. I struggled with a learning disability, had no answers. Yeah. Now I have the tools, you know, the heart math, the eye movement desensitization reprocessing, or EMDR, yeah, I sent I, some links on right. that. There are like very short videos to grasp what that's about. They recommend you hook up with a professional therapist who's accredited with one of the two organizations. And it normally takes about three sessions. We know someone who does it. They're very busy. But normally what it does, and I'm just going to quote something here. Recalling the traumatic event may feel as though the person is reliving the event all over again because the images, smells, sounds, and feelings are still there and can be triggered in the present. When activated, these memories cause a negative impact on our daily functioning. But what the MDR therapy does, it unfreezes the traumatic memories, allowing you to resolve them and through an H-step process, you can unfreeze those bad memories and reintegrate your life. And this is catching on the mental health community, the brain injury community. I mean, yeah. this is starting you know, to thing, spread. The uh, point I would like to make very clearly, and I know you all agree on this, is that a lot of people do not even know that they have post-traumatic stress disorder. Yep. Before I learned what it was, I was a mess, and I was not getting better. I was getting worse by the day. And so for some people that have never even hit their head, uh, you know, if you get jostled when you're little in some kind of manner, when your brain is growing, it can continue, it can carry on. Uh, you know, I'm always horrified when I see somebody picking up their child and swinging them around and jostling them or shaking oh, yeah. them, shaking you know, because syndrome. their brain is growing. And when you see how this brain moves around and sloshes up against those sharp edges and then it's just scary. Things, yeah. And so as you grow through your adulthood, for people who start having issues with different things, uh, you know, that you can have a post-traumatic stress disorder, even, you know, from seeing a car almost hitting you. We had that experience. We were we pulled out and, and the driver wasn't driving very well and he pulled out and there were cars coming from both ways. We never got hit, but we got jostled around. And I still have nightmares just from seeing those cars coming at me. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Tap into your body, you know, and be gentle with your body and listen and, and feed it and get it what, you know, you've got this these wonderful resources here also with Paul and his amazing group and just keep tuning in each week because we're going to continue as we go you know that's why we are here each week is to help one another and help you get that information and Paul you know we can't say thank you enough thank, thank you for allowing me to call in and the last thing I want to say is uh, as many South Louisianians joke uh, he's not right in the head but he looks fine uh, that's why I moved back to Louisiana. Now I fit back in because my brain injury was in Washington, D.C. And I didn't, I looked fine, but I didn't act right. And mm -hmm. so right. now that I'm back in South Louisiana, I have a little bit of act right because I fit in with the rest of the, of the, of the sillies that live here in, in <laughs> South Louisiana. Truth be known, even though you've conked your head or witnessed something that's abusive or traumatic, it still resonates in your brain like, now just said, um, you're not alone. So and it thank does you very affect. Much for taking my call. Yeah, thank you. We'll see thank you soon. Paul. Paul's going to Paul. promise that he's going to come live on the show. And um, all are welcome. Yes, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, we got some musicians here. Yeah. That we've been gifted with. Hi, Mike. Yeah. When How you, you doing? Want, when do you want to play a little jig for us? Whenever you're ready. How about now? Cool. We're going to do a song called "Lady in Pink." 
it's dedicated to my grandma out there who went through breast cancer, and it's dedicated to all the ladies out there who's going through this tough time. Hey, Mrs. Lady, Lady in Pink, I know you're going through a tough time. But I'm on your side, I won't let you give up your fight for survival, my friend. We all gonna walk hand by hand and raise that pink flag again. And to support all the ladies around the world tonight. You're the champion of your fight and only winners wear pink, my friend. And I won't let you die, my sister. Only winners wear pink, my friend. Hey, Mrs. Lady, Lady in Pink. Let's remember all the brave ladies who never gave up their fight for survival until the end. They're supporting you from heaven 100% because in the end, only winners with pink, my friend. And I won't let you give up your fight for survival. I won't let you die, my sister, my friend. Just remember, only winners with pink, my friend. And in the end, only winners with pink, my friend. Can we do one more? Oh, yeah. Yeah, do another one. Oh, cool. Next one is gonna, it's called, um, you can't, you can't go back to yesterday. Okay. Oh, How many doors can you open? How many doors can you walk through? But to know you can't go back to yesterday. But you can open the doors of the memories of today that will remind us of yesterday for all the ones who we lost of yesterday. Only thing we have is the memories of today that will remind us of yesterday. back to yesterday but you can open the door of tomorrow so how many doors can you walk through how many doors can you see the walk through but you can open up the memories of today the reminders of the lost ones of yesterday but to know you can't go back to yesterday but you have the memories of today the reminders of the lost ones of yesterday my friend Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We'll have you right. sing another song after a while. That's cool. Yeah. And Mike, who is your guitarist back there? His name is Six String Emil. He's like the grooviest guitar player ever. Yeah. All right. <laughs> How'd you guys meet each other? Uh, through a mutual friend called Austin. He, we met each other and then we became good friends, brother from another mother, but we play yeah. awesome music. Yeah. Come on, yeah. say Y'all's relationship <laughs> shines through it, really does. Yeah. Yeah. Mike okay. lives at Mimosa Place of yeah. is where I live, so Come on. it's good to have a neighbor over there. That's oh, good yeah. to see y'all. It's been a while since we got to hang out with y'all. Yeah. Hear your music. It's beautiful. Yeah. Fans, big Thank fans. <laughs> so, Richard, you want to take over now? Well, uh, his song he just sang is all about mindfulness yeah. for the present and for the moment and mental health work. And it really spoke to me because you know, I just lost my mother a month ago. Right. But her memory's been perpetuated through all of her piano students who are probably still playing piano mm -hmm. all over the Pacific Northwest. Right. I want to cover a little something about self-care and music is part of that, y'all. Whenever I'm getting things overwhelmed, I put on my music collection and thanks to a lady that has been on the show before elizabeth my musical horizons have expanded to a lot of new groups not just neil young <laughs> who likes neil young here i do <laughs> but and Joni, Joni mitchell and all the oh, other yeah. poplars but there's a little checklist i came up with the other day and it just asked a few questions here about 
what are we doing to check ourselves if we're getting too stressed out and dwelling in the past and not living for the moment? And I'm just going to do a few highlights of the questions. First one is take time for yourself. Are you doing that? Yep. Second one, allow yourself to make mistakes and be open about your weakness and following up on that, forgive yourself when you make those mistakes. We can be our own worst enemy on that. Ask from your needs to be met from a place of vulnerability. Don't be afraid to ask. Now this would be to a trusted person or therapist, not to somebody off the street. Spend time with friends. We're among friends here, folks. Mm -hmm. Rest. Don't stay up till two in the morning trying to solve that computer problem or stay over time at work too much. Play. Play activities. Co adult coloring books. Maybe even get out the, your kid's Lego set or whatever that's not going to be engaging all the techie stuff, all the intellectual stuff. Exercise. Hello. Mm -hmm. Swimming, walking. Spend money wisely. Don't overspend. Pursue your dreams. Enjoy and make time to enjoy and be intimate with those you love. Allow others to be disappointed in you. And they should accept that. Tell others what they mean to you. For those who have children, be present for them. You're never going to recapture that time again. Receive love from others. Don't just clam up. Learn to say your yeses and noes. Create a powerful support system for yourself. I go to group therapy, which has been a tremendous help. I have to kind of keep confidential where I go, but they've been tremendous. They know who they are. And lastly, big one here, celebrate accomplishments, big and small. Anybody have anyone to add to that list? Yeah, uh, I would like to add that, you know, like, Go for it. like in the end, we're all by ourselves. It's great to have friends. And if you need to talk to somebody, you can vent. I call him now. I guess now he's my best friend right now, you know? And I call him all the time. But, uh, and the vent too, and she listens. But it, it, besides that, if you like movies, treat yourself to a movie, you know? Oh, yes. Uh, or or, or, or uh, take a walk if, if, if something stresses you out. Take a walk and, and get some exercise. What you think about that, Richard? Good. Uh, stretch. Oh, stretch. Yes. stretch. Stretch is to me the best thing because number one, I don't like to walk and I don't like to exercise. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but that's my preference. So there's a really good one. Richard's doing it right now. It's called Butterfly. And you just do like this and you come up and you get your heart math breath in and out and like this and you roll around. And what this does is because a lot of us spend a lot of time on the computer, right? And we build up crystals in here, and that can cause a lot of problems. A lot of people have to have surgery. So you, you come from your belly button, you breathe, and you work your way up. And as you work your way up, you're opening your hands larger, and you're taking in those good breaths, and you're really pulling from your core. And you're going to feel that where it burns as you move, and you're going to crack and moon and you know, and open wide now. Really, does you feel that burn? That's a good burn. What's that? Muscles. That's new one. It's yeah. pulling from here and it's also breaking this up. The next one that's really good, put your arms out and let your hands be a weight. Use your body weight. Your hands, mm -hmm. your head are all weights and you're just going to go down, down, and you're going to feel that right here. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> Breathe and up, up, down, oh. down. Uh, up, and then you're going to push your arms out. I can't do it here, but you push your arms out and you do the same thing down, down, 
And you will see that every time you move to a different position, that it'll pull in your shoulder, it'll pull here. You can do the same thing, come up like this and clap your hands together and do that and let go. Do that and let go. And you'll feel that stress just running out of your oh, heart. Yeah. You feel that? Like, mm -hmm. And then you hug yourself and that is a really good thing to hug yourself because it releases endorphins and it actually caresses and presses on your thymus. <sighs> which hardly ever gets any attention. And so I'm, I'm stretched like uh, every morning I wake up, I sit up on my bed, I put my feet on the floor, you know, I do my heart breath immediately. And before I had this, I would wake up so anxious every morning that I just could not get my day off on an even keel. But now it's automatic. I have my journal on the side of me. I do my heart breath, I put my feet on the floor, I breathe in, and I do these stretches. You know, another one is good is to just gently do this because this is a very neglected muscle right here. Mm -hmm. And what happens is as time goes by, you can all see that we get these really rounded shoulders. And rounded mm -hmm. shoulders cause a lot of back pain, a lot of yeah. neck pain. The other one is put your hand here, connect into your heart, and just let your head be awake and breathe and have a good sigh of relief. I call it the SOR, there's nothing better than the, you know, when people come, you know, for session work and they're all, you know, tied up in knots and they get there and then all of a sudden they just go and you can tell that their body, their immune system is taken over and that's when the time to heal comes because all that cortisol is being cleaned out of your muscles and so just gently use the weight of your head, don't force it and you'll feel that nice long stretch come all the way up in the top and into here. And the other thing you can do is clap your hands together like this and rub them. And you'll feel this nice warm glow just washing. Cover your eyes with your hands. Feel a pink glow going into your eyes. Take your glasses off. Don't do like me. And then we'll see after a while when you do this, let the pink energy go in. And when you put your glasses back on or look out to read, you will actually see better because it increases the oxygen to your eyes. So those are just some things. I mean, we can, we, we've got tons more. So tune, make sure you tune in next week because we try to give new information every week. Um, did anybody want to talk? I can talk about yeah. some self-esteem and do a little tapping. But if you have something... Uh -uh. I would like to say, like, like I said earlier, if anyone would like to come on the show and read some of their work, you know. It has to be uplifting and positive. If it's uplifting and positive, yeah. you know, we, we, you're welcome to come on or, or even sing a song if yeah, somebody wants to do exactly. You're welcome to do that. Call me. My number is 781-4255. And, 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 and also, if there's any one of y'all that have mental issues that y'all would like to, like to talk to, call me at 781-4255. And, and of course, I'd like to say hello to our friend, Larry Crouch. Uh, Larry is, I think Larry is watching the show. He goes to the support group with me and Richard, and we go to, we go to church together sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how when you get out in the community and, uh, you know, people come up and say, I see the show, I watch it every week, it helps me, and thank you all so much, you know, for the support. Uh, it's why we're here each week, uh, you know, but uh, I went to the AT&T store because my phone had locked up, right? Uh -huh. And I told the guy, I said, listen, I, I, I got, you know, some information that I need for the show. Can you help me? And he grabbed it right away and he said, well, what's your show about? You know, and, and I told him, you know, and uh, he said, wow, I have ADHD so Come bad. On. I could wow. really use that. And he just was like a fountain and you could tell his eyes welled up and he looked at me and he said you know i really could use some help and some tools and i said well listen tune in and you'll get some help and some resources and also we always love having people coming on and talking about this you know because the more we're open about it the less stigma is applied to it and the less fear yes and you will do better <clears throat> but you can feel the brain is a body part just like any other part diabetes or anything and it can get sick and so you know together y'all i'm so proud of everybody because we've made leaps and bounds don't y'all don't y'all agree yes. i think we're, we're yes. growing even more yeah right. before i forget the our connections 
mental health support group meets the first and third Sunday, not the fifth Sunday yet. And the next support group will be this coming Sunday, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at First Lutheran Church, 301 West Farrell Road, right behind the Starbucks off of Settlers Trace and Ambassador. And for more information, call Denver Nobles. And for those writing that down, I'll give you all a minute. 849-6764. Denver's been a NAMI certified facilitator for at least 20 years. Bob, myself, and Jeff became certified recently. It is a lifeline for those who can't get hold of services uh, or just having a hard time finding services. It is a peer-to-peer -peer support group. I highly recommend it. Yeah, and a lot of things we share here, you know, they're free, but if you go to some place and have to pay for them, it can get very expensive, you know? And uh, so I'm pretty proud of the work we do here on AOC and the sharing that we do and the resources that we have gained. Um, I, I want to just talk about self-esteem. Is it okay for a second? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I wanted to share how I realized these past few days that I needed some self-esteem work. I was hurting physically. I was slumping. I was having some issues with some old things that had come up and I did the work for two days. And at the end of the two days, and this is the thing I would like to just from my heart and, and let people embrace themselves. You know, do the self-care, take the time to do the work because it not only helps you reduce your stress and take mm -hmm. those years of memories. I realized that my shoulders were, had been like this, you know, from that memory. And so when I started doing the tapping, and we've talked about tapping, and it uh, is a wonderful tool. And you basically are just tapping with your fingers anywhere, your collarbone, on top of your head, on the eye, on the jaw, on the lip, on the thigh, anywhere that feels good, that feels like it. And when you start, you can immediately feel your heartbeat slow down. Mm -hmm. You know, you get calmer. You might get chills all around in your body. So try it with us now. We can encourage you to do that. And you just tap. And this is about self-esteem. And I did the work for two days, and I realized how many parts of my body had been hurting from mm -hmm. this memory because it had affected my self-esteem. It, it affected your body. And self-esteem, yeah. they yeah. say, really, you don't realize how much it affects your health and how much it's carried in parts of your body. And so right now, like self-esteem reflects a person's overall emotional evaluation of his or her worth. And uh, your belief uh, system, you know, that has been given to you or passed down or something that you might have bought into, uh, we may get older and we may never think about that, but sometimes it does get stuck in the subconscious. So we're just going to tap right now and you're just going to say, my name is, I'm going to say my name, my name is Nellie. And I have this belief that I am worthy. I have this belief that I'm worthy. I am good. You know, and if you see right now, I'm starting to well up, you know, don't be afraid because it's still caught up in there. And if it wasn't, I would not have become so emotional. And we've done this in groups and people just it just pours out of them and they cry and they say, you know, I didn't even know that was there. And I say exactly my point that you're carrying these things and they're affecting every aspect. And then once you let the floodgates open, you become more aware of your self-esteem and how it is reflected outwards into other people, how it affects other people. And so just tap and say, I am compassionate. I, I am very kind. And I have a great self-esteem because I am worthy. And you are worthy. I'm here to tell you. We're all here to tell you. You were worthy, you know, of the miracles waiting for you. Open yourself up to them because... You know, nobody is different from you. You're just as worthy to have them as anyone else. You know, and we've seen quite a few miracles oh, yeah. with all this that we've been dealing yeah. with. So I just wanted to share that with y'all because that's been a great tool for me this past couple of days. And um, can we let Mike do another song? Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a good time for that. Okay.
I did a song like this a couple of days ago called Young at Five, Young at Nine. Okay. Once upon a time, young at five, going down the highway to the light of the freedom. Getting a, driving away from my haunted demons. As I was young at five, I see a shadowy figure of Jesus Christ, my Lord, so I can walk with him in peace. When I was young at nine, I found the Lord Almighty, Jesus Christ. I will walk with him to the river to be as clean as the day I was born. I will walk with him in peace of mind, peace of time, peace to walk with him through the gates of heaven. I'll fear no evil. I will follow him to the promised land where I'll be at peace in heaven one of these days with the Lord Almighty Jesus Christ. He will welcome us home to heaven, my friend. He washed away my demons. He washed away the demons that was in my womb, the demons that was in my mind. Now I'm a believer. I believe in the Lord. He baptized me and I've been saved the day I was nine, nine as young. Thank you, Mike. Uh -huh. You guys are terrific. And thank y'all so much for sharing. Oh, uh, no problem. Uh, I oh. like it because it's so unique. It really is. It is you know? really. You're wow. really talented. Y'all are both really talented. Thank yeah. you. Uh, getting back to the brain trauma, uh, to talk to people that if you, if you aren't sure if you have any, if you had any kind of traumatic brain Im image injury, here are some of the physical symptoms. Loss of consciousness for a few seconds to a few minutes. No loss of consciousness, but a state of being dazed, confused, or disoriented. Headaches. Nausea or vomiting. Fatigue or drowsiness. Difficulty sleeping. Mm -hmm. Sleeping more than usual. Dizziness or loss of balance. And here's some of the uh, sensory symptoms. Sensory problems such as blurred visions, ringing in the ears, a bad taste in the mouth, or changes in the ability to smell, sensitive to light or to sound. And here's some of the mental symptoms. Memory or concentration problems, mm -hmm. mood changes or mood swings, mm -hmm. and feeling depressed or anxious. Those are some of the things. If that you, is if, good tips, Bob, because a lot of people don't know. Like you yeah. said, like they're not aware know. of it. And, um, you know, I want to just share very quickly, uh, you know, work in the um, natural healing arts. Um, and I always want to stress to people, you're not really aware of so much chemical overload in your products that you're using around your house, your washing powder, dish soap. Your shampoo is so important because you're dumping chemicals on your head next to your eyes, and especially if you have brain trauma injury, it's important because you're more prone to get what's called multiple chemical sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be talking about that next show because uh, uh, Brandon and I both have that, and uh, it can be pretty severe. Oh, and yes. we're going to give the symptoms we're going to give until I learned about it. I really... You know, a lot of people after 9-11 developed this, um, so they cannot even have a whiff of perfume or anything. Uh, it will knock them, literally knock them out because mm -hmm. their blood pressure skyrockets are so oversaturated with chemicals. So watch for, we'll go through this, you know, if you start watching, read your labels. You may have to pay a little bit more, but guess mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. It goes further. 
Oh, yes. So you're not going to run out as fast, and you're not going to be dumping some of this stuff. We're talking like antifreeze. We're talking a lot of bad things that people are unknowingly dumping on their scalp. And as time goes by, it affects your vision. You know, it affects your scalp, becomes crusty. Uh, that's a, a lot of loss, hair loss, and different pro problems in it. You know, this is an interesting, how much long we got? We've got time. This is a very interesting article that I found, and it talked about the Native Americans and why they had long hair. And this might kind of resonate with you as we're talking about it. And uh, I know not everybody's going to go and let their hair grow long, but we're talking to show you how your hair, you know, like we talked about the heart, the new knowledge from the heart, how your hair is possibly going to serve you a lot better if you take better care and become more conscious of your scalp and your skin. Mm -hmm. In native cultures, men and women are recognized by the length and glory of their hair. The cutting of hair by oppressors, oppressors has long represented the submission and defeat of people through hmm. humiliation. Hair is largely believed to them to be an extension of your thoughts. Hairstyles are especially important for they portray and announce participation in various events. You think of the hair as just something that warms your head, but every hair is on your body for a reason. The hair of the legs regulates the glandular system and stabilizes a person's electromagnetic field. The hair under the armpits protects a very sensitive area where the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems come together. Uh, we're, we're going up there. Keep, All right. on, keep on reading. And this affects your brain and your energy level. I'm going to stop right there. And everybody, thank you. Catch